Thanks, thanks, Ron. Thanks for uh, the opportunity to invite me for this interesting session. So today, what we want to do is to give you a perspective of what at AWS we are doing in manufacturing space. A main takeaway from 20 minutes will be to learn how our top manufacturing customer defining the digitization, what are their key asks, and how we address that with AWS service and solutions. A little bit about myself. My name is Sanjay here. I'm a senior solution architect at AWS. I'm based out of Dallas. I'm working in IT industry for last 20 plus years. And one of the focus domain for me here in AWS is helping in the area of digital transformation. The digital transformation of various different verticals and, and manufacturing is one of the main focus area. So what's hey, my... Sanjay, yeah, yeah. what yes? Point out, and, and I should have mentioned this earlier, with Sanjay's cross industry expertise, there's individuals on our call from State Street Financial and other entities. The important thing to take away is as he goes through this example in manufacturing, keep in mind that a lot of the same premises about efficiency, about optimization of your workflows can be applied to your industry if it's not directly in manufacturing. So everyone should just look at this if you're not, again, if you're not Ford or Kohler or G appliances, we're all in this session, but in a, in a non-traditional manufacturing role, we can share with you uh, ideas and how this can work in your environment. Yes, thanks, Ron, thanks. And yes, like like also the way Michael said, right? This is how industry is transforming. Like we are in the industry 4.0 era now. So what I'm going to show is like what they're doing to do to go into industry 4.0. So with no further ado, uh, let's start talking about some of the manufacturing industry drivers, trends, and challenges, and how we understand them at AWS. So many of you in the call will relate to that manufacturers have a wealth of data. And the importance of the data and getting your hand on the data, whether it is from your manufacturing show floor, whether it's from asset in the field, is capable of truly, truly transforming each individual function within the manufacturing process. And we really call it digitally executed manufacturing. Uh, other trend which we see more and more is a strong desire to be more sustainable to energy consumption and to be environment conscious. And then that makes sense because uh, manufacturers are leading consumer of the word energy. So that is one area we see here, uh, we hear a lot. Uh, and, uh, and another important trend we see is change in business model where, where certain manufacturers want to offer products or machine as a service, like, uh, like infra or product as a service we talk in IT industry, similar to that and create a new revenue stream. Uh, as we understand these trends, there are some challenges as well. So if I touch base on the challenges, first and foremost, obviously, reducing cost is a constant challenge. Uh, so in the factory floor, overall equipment effectiveness is somewhat around 60 to 65%. And even if in good days, it may be 70, 75. But, but there is definitely a scope of optimization. Uh, other challenge we hear from the sector expert is workforce iteration and workforce iteration is very high uh, right now and automation will play a very critical role here. So manufacturers really need to automate processes much beyond where they are today. A third trend in the similar line is also which get highlighted is security of uh, operational infrastructure and the focus on security in factory are never been more important than today. So there is an upward trend of uh, cyber attack. So we looked at, at data and in 2020, 31% of the security professional in manufacturing sector said they experienced cyber attack on their operational infrastructure. So three out of 10 already claiming that they have seized this kind of attack in their in operational infrastructure. So with that said, we also collected information about uh, what top manufacturers are looking for in reference to automation or so-called a, a smart factory. So the most customer want to have, uh, number one, the ability to have a real-time visualization of uh, OE, that is the overall equipment effectiveness. So currently this is being done mostly manually, sometime even in Excel spreadsheet. 
So once this information become available in real time, optimization in production comes natural. And that goes hand in hand with the, the challenges we saw in prior slide. Second uh, trend we saw is the computer vision, uh, like with the edge computing maybe in mind. But uh, for example, like uh, automated quality inspection for their products. So that is the second uh, biggest ask we see in AWS when, when manufacturing customer comes to AWS. And that reduces the FTQ cost as well. And we are also seeing a surge, especially in the last 12 months, where manufacturers want to want to want to have a granular visibility into their ERP and the supply chain system. And we see that with the COVID-19, what's how the supply chain is impacted, right? They want to see a granular data or granular visibility on that. And that has a huge impact on their operation. So all in all, automation and the process optimization is the key takeaway when we refer to smart factory. And before jumping onto how we address the challenge or address the ask from manufacturers, uh, it is important to understand why AWS. So why AWS? Because for more than 25 years, Amazon has designed and manufactured products, the smart products, and distributed billions of product through its globally connected distributed network. And it uses cutting edge automation, machine learning, and AI, all with AWS at its core. So Amazon.com is really a big reference for AWS. Uh, I will not do more deep dive on that right now uh, because of time, time constraint. So let's let now let's discuss how we coach the transformation step for traditional manufacturing unit. So if any traditional manufacturer, like some of you in the call as well, want to come uh, to come to AWS. How do we coach uh, the steps uh, we take to go fully digital? So we define, or rather I should say, the way we understand the traditional manufacturing stack, as seen here, where all the manufacturing applications, all the manufacturing applications are um, analytics and reporting system are co-located, while the ERP, enterprise resource planning, SAP system, all these are in the enterprise location, which may be co-located or maybe the nearby location. So for evolving that to a smart manufacturing, uh, I advocate a two-step process. And what are they? The first step is, sorry, uh, first step is we go a hybrid approach uh, where we inter introduce the AWS cloud and start moving, uh, the application from factory floor and ERP from the uh, enterprise location and kind of create a data lake. Basically, we start pulling the data from these uh, locations to the cloud first and we start leveraging the data lake part. And in the second stage, we achieve the cloud native manufacturing. Like uh, if I see here, in this stage, we even bring the analytics and reporting system to the center place. and. Uh, start leveraging most advanced AI ML based uh, decision making. Uh, so this is our two step process with, which we coach if any manufacturing want to transform their operation digitally end to end. So now if we draw the reference architecture with the functional area in mind, and uh, I promise uh, I will not do very deep dive on uh, technical aspect of it. So this is how we see the manufacturing reference architecture in AWS. And this reference architecture is designed to show how a smart factory solution on AWS might look like. So on the left hand side, we have plans from factories and on the right hand side, we have the AWS cloud. Um, now let's, let's fill the boxes with the actual services solution and platform we offer. Yes, so <laughs> all the discussion so far is for this one slide, by the way. The, this is my most favorite slide and uh, um, showing you how multiple services can be stitched together like a Lego block to digitize and transform the end-to-end -end manufacturing process. I'm mean, proud to say how far we have came to cover each and every aspect of transformation from, from current state of a manufacturing plant to a fully digital operation. Like if you see on the, on the left-hand side, the uh, left-hand side, uh, we uh, on top left hand side we put a mechanism for data to export of the factory ma machine and ingest to the cloud to start pulling to the cloud and data could be from PLCs, SCADA systems, and so forth. But but a core component here is a green grass uh, which runs on an edge gateway 
and can ingest data from legacy protocols like Modbus, OPC bus. And the way it, the, the way it works is data comes to Greengrass and we can make a real time decision at edge. And if that data need to go to the cloud, yeah, if yes, then payload gets sent uh, gets sent to a pre-integrated interface to the like MQTT to the IoT core, which runs in the cloud, obviously. And uh, then on the cloud side, once the data come to the cloud, we need a service which can collect, store, organize, and even monitor data at a scale to help you make better data-driven decision. So all the heavy lifting is done here, and it is pre-integrated with with the uh, services like uh, uh, SiteWise. So that is the kind of service which does a heavy lifting for you and uh, provide all these things like uh, storing the data as well as organizing it, collecting it and things like that. We also recognize that not all system can actually go into the AWS cloud uh, and there are still a need for local compute and storage within the factory. And I think Michael, you also touched base on the edge computing part. So for that, we do, uh, that is where the outpost come into play. The outpost, you can migrate uh, and actually run these local services and database using the same services uh, that actually run on the AWS cloud. So main idea is that you need not to train your staff or IT uh, to do two different platform. Or you can feel of the services which run on AWS platform is very same what you are running on the cloud. So that is the biggest advantage come out of the AWS outpost. And uh, yeah, that is one thing. So now back to the AWS cloud side, we have service which will hold your data. For example, if you are using a structured data, you, you can store into RDS if you are. So basically the whole idea is the data lake. So there is a tools available for you to create your data lake with just plug and play model, just like, as I said, Lego block. You configure it, there are tools available, you have a data lake uh, requirement taken care right away. Um, then when data comes to IT core, you can do multiple things with it. You can send it to rule engine to take intelligent decisions. You can send it to time series database, or you can jump into analytics. And in the analytics layer, we can, where you can visualize or analyze the dashboards, fancy dashboard, you can define all these things. From there, you can also start building a machine learning model. And that is where uh, we talk about Amazon SageMaker. For example, um, uh, you can you can start correlating your data against machine learning model and for uh, and or, or you can do predictive maintenance right here. So that is where we start plugging in machine learning models. And you know not to be a machine learning engineer for that or expert into that. So a lot of heavy lifting is done by the pre-built model for especially manufacturing in mind. Then if you are looking for a deeper anal uh, analytics, you can prepare your data for analytics uh, with the AWS Glue. Uh, Glue is a like fully managed extract, transform, and load service. We call it ETL. I think it's a very industry standard term, ETL. So you simply, uh, you, so you simply point AWS Glue to your data lake, and AWS Glue discover your data and store the associated uh, information for you to ingest further. Then um, another interesting service I would like to highlight is uh, your data warehouse uh, need. So not only the data lake, you may also have a data warehouse need. So that is where we have a service called Redshift, which again a data warehouse service. So so this re this reference architecture, my main goal to take away from this reference architecture, not to deep dive every single one of them, but just to give you a notion on a kind of feeling how this blocks available for you to when you start thinking about transforming your operations, manufacturing operations, things like that. And it is not only limited to IT, it is also, um, uh, we also look across the whole of the manufacturing value chain. For an example, ERP applications. They are pre-built with our uh, lot of partners and uh, eco partner ecosystem. Similarly, uh, we also have our engineering design workload around PLM, things like that. So just, just to touch base on these services, and obviously feel free to connect me if you want to deep dive in a particular area of these services, which I kind of, give a hint of it. 
uh, I will move to some of the case studies uh, in the same uh, who are leveraging this kind of services. So one 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 case study I will talk about is the Volkswagen, the, the German autom automotive manufacturer. So they kind of transform their operation. And I I heard I think Ron you said some somebody from auto manufacturing also on the call. But yes, so they did uh, implement it pretty much the subset of the architecture which I showed in the prior slide. And their main ask was to like bring the data to the cloud and use AI ML base uh, uh, offering. And with that, uh, they are able to improve the product efficiency and the productivity by 30%. And if you think about it, it it's, it's huge indeed. Just by uh, transforming a new way of working, it's a huge saving for them. Similarly, I will go for another uh, case study that is from GE, GE in manufacturing. So they came with a very different mindset to us. They came with a different mindset of reducing TCO, total cost of operation reduction. So they have roughly they had roughly 34 uh, data center across the globe, and uh, they are now going down to only four, and remaining all will move to AWS. So they are already halfway through, and they also migrating in this uh, sense around 9,000 of their application to the AWS. So with just they are halfway through this transformation for GE. And they are already realizing a 52% reduction in total cost of ownership. So that is the kind of magnitude we are referring when, when a manufacturing industry is going into the digital gung ho about digital things. So this is the kind of uh, uh, changes we are observing. And and uh, just to give a little bit more detail about uh, about this uh, uh, enchilada. So we are not only AWS services, we are also have a very strong partner ecosystem like UiPath or Wind River, you are already on the call. So we do work from chip to the cloud all the way with the partner ecosystem. And that's where we come into play where we do, um, we do have a partner developing a solution for chip design all the way to uh, solutions, ready solutions from predictive to uh, preventive maintenance or from process monitoring, that kind of solutions. Similarly, virtual uh, end on, I think that is where the Shalaja, uh, my colleague will talk about it. This is another important aspect of it. Similarly, in the uh, when we're talking about supply chain, there are machine learning models. So we do have a, a, a rich set of partner ecosystem through our marketplace, which can put you forward for your um, aspiration of going digital. And with that, we also have few programs uh, internally, which helps you take it to the right path, like in, starting from digital innovation. This, this really programs to build around the working backward principle of AWS, where we help our customer during exploratory phase or defining phase, I should say. Then we, once uh, we have a customer who are really fully committed, they go to the migration phase. And that is where we provide uh, consulting support, like like solution architect, like me, jump into it, training, and even service credit to do a POC. So that is the kind of uh, program, that is the kind of uh, initiation we do at that migration phase. And third is the enterprise foundation phase, where we are. So going to the cloud is not end of journey; that is a start of journey, and that is where the where the further innovation kicks in. And uh, this enterprise foundation program helps you out uh, uh, for uh, further innovation. So I think in the limited time, this is what uh, I could cover. And I will be happy to uh, jump in more and uh, give a deep dive if anybody interested to know more about it. So with that said, uh, uh, I'm open for any question you may have or Ron, back to you.